Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at some lesser known sides of the CS3 suite, and that is Device Central. With the release of CS3, Adobe has had an increased focus on using content with mobile devices. We're going to take a look at how we can use Device Central and Photoshop, as well as After Effects, to create some content for use on a mobile phone. Let's see how. I've launched Device Central, and you'll find it in your Applications folder, or perhaps in your Dock or Start menu. And you'll see with Device Central that it gives you a choice to create a new Flash file, Photoshop file, or Illustrator file. Unfortunately, nowhere on here does it say New Video File, but we can make that work. Let's go ahead and start with a new Photoshop file. And I need to pick a device, so I'll just choose a Motorola, and let's just use a Motorola Razor for this example. I could choose what type of graphic I want to create. For example, there's wallpaper or a full screen graphic. And when satisfied, I just click Create. And what I get is a brand new graphic sized for use on that mobile device. I've already got another layered file open, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag over the background texture here. Let's press Command T and then Command Zero for free transform. We can scale that. Just hold down Shift and Option to scale towards the center. And then we can go ahead and add some more layers. I'll grab the logo and we'll toss that over. There we go. Command T for free transform and Command Zero. And we'll scale that to position as well. There we go. I'm going to modify this just a little bit. I'll put a new layer in here, M for marquee. D for the default colors and X to toggle. Draw my box and fill that. Now, you're all pros, so we're just going to keep throwing out the shortcuts. Option Delete will fill with the foreground color, and we can nudge that into place. Let's name our layer, because unnamed layers are sloppy. We'll call that Box, and position it below the logo. That's working pretty well. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of an edge here to help this logo stand out. There we go. Let's view this at 100% so it's a little more accurate. And I'm going to add a little bit of an outer glow here. We'll push that out. There we go. And let's just sample the color from the background. That works pretty well. Good. That's all set there. Uh, I can go ahead and take a quick look at this. If I'm satisfied, I could then choose to save this. Let's choose File, Save for Web and Devices, and we can check this and see how it's going to look as a JPEG graphic. We can adjust the compression settings as we need to, and if we'd like, click Device Central, and you can go back to Device Central, where you can look at the graphic on a virtual cell phone emulator. And this allows you to see how the graphic will appear as well as what it might look like if it was indoors or outdoors or indirect sunshine and how that would affect the exposure of the graphic. When satisfied, we can just go ahead and close this back down for a second and then click Save to save that file out. That'll work well. We'll just call this Wallpaper. And I'm going to go ahead and call it Wallpaper 2 and hit Save. And it writes the JPEG file. Now, I promised you that we can also take this into After Effects. So let's jump back to Device Central for a second and double check our video settings. If I go ahead and browse devices, I can look at all the phone profiles that are loaded. And I'm going to take a look here at the Motorola Razor profile again. If I go to the Video tab, I see that this supports video at 176 by 144 pixels. So let's just remember those numbers. If you need to, you can write them down. I'll just set this off to the side here so I can see it. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change my canvas size. Image, canvas size. And we'll go to 176 by 144 pixels and click OK. That's fine. It's going to go ahead and clip the images. 
But fortunately, all that data is still there because changing the canvas size does not discard the data at the edges of the image. I'll now go ahead and choose Save As, and we'll call this Cell Video. And save that out as a layered PSD file. There we go. Let's close these both down, and I'm going to switch over to After Effects where we can import that file. And we'll bring that in as a composition. Everything comes in, the file is sized properly. One of the nice things with After Effects CS3 is that layer styles actually come over now very nice and clean. Let's go ahead and turn off some of these layers. And what I'd like to do is stylize this a bit. I'm going to go ahead and add a new texture layer. You'll find these with lots of others to choose from in your presets folder. So if you twirl down animation presets and look at the presets folder, there's a whole category of backgrounds. Let's use the circuit background here. And that's created a nice tile, except it replaced my mosaic layer. So let's hit undo for a second. And instead, we'll make a new empty solid layer. And we'll call that circuit. There we go. And double click to apply the circuit. That worked well. Temporarily, we'll turn that off and we're going to change the color. If we look over here, you'll see the tritone effect, and it's using these colors to create it. So if we take the eyedropper, we could just sample that red. And now when we look at the circuit layer, we get a nice, cool texture that matches our other part of the document. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more things. Let's twirl down evolution options here. And what I want to do is tell it to cycle the evolution. So if we do this, it will do a full cycle and it will loop. So let's go ahead and twirl this down and look at our keyframes. A quick way to do that is hit U for user added keyframes. And what I want to do is one full cycle of the evolution. So it starts at zero. And if I come down here to the end of the composition and tell it to do one rotation, it will be seamless. Now, if you look closely in the timeline here, you see there's already some keyframes. So if I just pull that keyframe down, it's going to do one evolution. The only thing getting in the way is that there's also some scale keyframes. So let's just turn those off. So all the pattern does is cycle. If we hit play there, you'll see that we now have a seamless cycling animation that will loop. This means it can play infinitely and the pattern will keep playing smoothly with no jumping the impression of the person. Let's watch that through. We'll set this to loop. And here it plays all the way through. And when it gets to the end, it's going to seamlessly jump back to the beginning and play again. There we go. Nice seamless animation. Let's drop that over the mosaic background in the timeline and we'll change its blending mode to screen. Now, if you're not seeing your blending modes, you can go ahead and right click and make sure that the modes column is checked. If we set that to screen mode, it will drop out the darker areas and blend them all together. Let's take a look at that. Good, we've got a nice seamless texture with a little bit extra going on. I'm gonna come up here now and here's our box, that's fine. And let's ungang those, and we'll just scale the height. There we go. And press T for opacity, and we'll set that to 60%. That creates a nice screen effect to help offset the logo. The logo's there, it's easy to see. If I'd like, I could put a little bit of enhancement to this. I'm gonna add a new layer, choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to add a blur using the CC Radial Fast Blur. We'll tell this to zoom only the brightest areas. Or we can leave it to standard, in fact. That's fine. And let's just change the blend mode there to something like Add or Soft Light. There we go. That created a nice softening to it. And we can go ahead and preview that. And what we have is a nice, subtle animation ready for the cell phone. Let's go ahead and add that to the render queue. Composition, add to render queue. 
and we'll just render that out. In fact, everything's fine here, so we'll just spit this out as a movie file, and then we'll quickly convert it to use as a cell phone animation. Let's render that out to the desktop real quick. Cell video, MOV, and we'll hit render. It's a fast animation and render. After Effects CS3 has gotten much faster, in fact. And we'll come back out here to our desktop, open up that movie, and I could choose File Export. Now, you might be saying, how do I know what file format to use? Well, if we go back to Device Central, if we look at the Video tab, we'll see that it supports a couple of formats for this phone, 3GPP and MPEG-4. Now, lots of other phones support Flash Video, so if that's the case, you can easily create a Flash Video file right inside of After Effects CS3. But we'll go ahead here and quickly process this. I chose File Export, and I specified Movie to 3G. We can go ahead and hit Save, and it will convert that file. And one of the nice things about the 3GPP format is that it just slashes the file size. In fact, we went from a 6.3 megabyte file to a 80 kilobyte file. Let's switch back to Device Central for some quick testing, and we'll choose File Open. I can select that video that I just created. There it is, and hit Open. And you'll see that the video loads in the emulator. Let's turn off the reflections. And there it is. In fact, the video is playing. You can see the subtle movement we created. And we can test these full quality animations on a virtual cell phone device. Plus, if flash video is more your speed, feel free to browse some of the other templates that are available. And you'll notice that in some of the device profiles, it will specify what format. Now, Flash Video is up and coming, so keep an eye on that, and you'll see more options arise on newer cell phones. But in the meantime, Device Central will make it very easy for you to test your content and see it in motion. Now, that was a very small, niche tutorial. I invite you to subscribe to our regular weekly podcast called Photoshop for Video, which you could find at the website photoshopforvideo.com, as well as on iTunes. Plus, if you'd like more, feel free to pick up the new book from Focal Press, also called Photoshop for Video. We have a theme going. I'm your host, Rich Harrington. Thanks again for joining me, and feel free to explore some of the great opportunities of the new Creative Suite.